Well, it's day eight and uh, we're not at Camp Bastion. We tried to get out there, but we had some transportation issues. Uh, basically, with the big operation going down, there's also a lot of civilian media. And quite frankly, there's just no more, uh, no more beds. So there's no way for us to get down there and no place for us to stay. So we are staying at Kandahar Airfield for another day. And uh, where I'm standing right now is actually what used to be the border of the airfield. I say what used to be the border because they're actually expanding the base to make room for the 30,000 more troops who are going to be coming out here. So uh, right now we're going to go around the base, talk to some folks, and uh, we're actually going to go over to the hospital and uh, see if we can talk to some of the patients there um, who have come back from the operation and kind of get their perspective. Day 8 starts right now. Um, I have three kids back home, a wife who is, is a physiotherapist. The eldest son has been out in Helmand as a Danish infantryist. Um, one year ago I was out here actually in Kandahar while he was in Helmand province. Um, we have been through all these kinds of thoughts about what's going to happen and what if anything is happening. Um, my, my two other kids are not going the military way, not even going the doctoral uh, way. Yes. Which Probably which quite I think wise. that's good for them because yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> there's more than, not more than one doctor in the family actually. Of course I miss my family, I speak to them every one or twice a week, but they're quite accustomed to me going out uh, on these short missions, two or the maximum three months at a time, and everybody can stand with that if you decide to do it. So. Well, I can't recommend anybody to be out here <laughs> together with your son, at least not if he's in the fighting position as they were out in here. I mean, it was horrible. Every time casualties went in, and when I heard of something going on down in Helmand, it was just well, it's extremely distressing. And we just agreed that we wouldn't on board go out at the same time. I mean, it's something completely different if he is in, in some supporting uh, function, but being out there in Fort Amadillo, as it was at that time, St. Fort and Keenan, it was just horrible. So. And how proud are you of your son? Oh, I'm, I mean, he's doing his job. He's a very good soldier. He has decided for himself. It was extremely difficult to, to realize that he was not going to be a doctor or a lawyer, <laughs> but, but a soldier, and he's extremely good. And uh, that's the way he wants to live his life, and we have to support him. That's what we have done. It hasn't been easy to do. So. Uh, where were you when you got injured? Um, I was in the eastern desert. I uh, don't really know exactly where I was. Yeah, you were just out there. Um, yeah, and uh, just got hit by an IED. Oh, really? Wow. Were you in a MRAP? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. And uh, how long ago did this happen? I think three days ago, two, two days ago, yeah. something like that. I'm not sure. How's the Don't treatment really know how been? How long have been here? <laughs> <laughs> how long's the how how's the treatment been here? Um, good. I actually can walk now. I mean, I wasn't able to walk as soon as I got here. I wasn't able to walk. Like, couldn't move at all. Too much pain. I don't even have any uh, pain medicine. I'm not on pain medicine or anything right now. Um, the other thing that's wrong, like the main thing that's wrong with me is my spine, because. You know, crunched just like when I, got, I was in the turret of the truck and it threw me out of the truck about 15 feet away from the, the wow. truck so I mean it wasn't it wasn't too bad I mean don't really want to go home but got to so your next stop is where um I think Germany Germany yeah and then you're gonna head home from there but where would you rather be here here well not here Delhi. But I mean I, I actually don't mind being here. This is my first appointment. So how long have you been in country? Uh, three months. Wow. How are your uh, how are your brothers doing? Well I actually have a, a legit brother here. So my blood brother? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And uh, my driver is my best friend from boot camp. The driver that was in the truck with me. That's my best friend from boot camp, so are they worried about you? Yeah, I, w I would imagine. Where's your brother at? In Kaste, a couple couple clicks away from where I'm stationed at. And, uh, is he a Marine? Yes. Yeah. 
How's he uh, doing? How's he fine. handling this? He's fine. I talked to him last night. He uh, thought it was a lot. Like they explained it a lot worse than what it actually is. So I told him. I told him how what was wrong with me and stuff. So. Is there anything you'd like to say to your friends and family back home? Coming home. <laughs> Although I'm a bit disappointed that we couldn't get you closer to the operation in Marja, I am glad you had a chance to hear the stories of Dr. Christensen and Lance Corporal Swingle, a doctor and a patient, both who are very proud of what they're doing here in Afghanistan. Now, just because you live in a big base like Kandahar doesn't mean you're immune to insurgent attacks. Today, Nate and I spent a little time with our faces in the dirt due to two rocket attacks. Now we are safe and we're looking forward to what's next. Join us tomorrow as we continue 30 days through Afghanistan.